this is Charlie Matutiello with another video on Native American flute making. This video is one that might benefit you if you've had some difficulties making a flute or especially the track area. We also have a video called The Secret to Native American Flute Making which covers a lot of that little spot under there and an additional follow-up video that gives you a little bit more detail about where you know and when and how. But this video is specifically about our flute kit. So, as you guys may remember, this is the flute that I made when we put our flute kit together. I've decided to keep it. I've been using it for all kinds of stuff. We played the little blues um, section out there in the park, and that was kind of nice. It's a good flute. I really like it a lot, and uh, I've decided to keep this one because it's, it's been that good to me. So, anyway, I've noticed, though, while I was playing it, there's a little bit of an air leak up here, and it doesn't sound as clear as it did a few weeks ago. And some of you may have this difficulty right away when you're making the flute and some of you may not but it may happen later on down the road so what we're going to do is we're going to take my old block here that's just a flat piece of wood and we're going to make it like this one and this one here actually solves all that problem and I'll show you why and we're going to put this block on lot louder. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my squeezy clamps, which you all know I like to use my squeezy clamps, um, so I can show you some differences here. There's a note, actually, that I can't achieve with my little flat bottom block that I can with the new one. It's right there. You have to blow hard to get it to even come out. And uh, here's the new block that I made just testing it to see if my idea was true about what we could do to fix this easily enough for you guys at home without having to buy any kind of fancy tools or burning rods or any of this kind of mess. So, you get the idea. Uh, what I've done here is I've taken a piece of sandpaper and I've rounded the bottom of this flute just a little bit, and I've also rounded it up some. And we're going to go ahead and do that now, so I'd like to make sure you guys know that this stuff can be done. Once again, the block that I was originally using, not playing as well. And uh, this is also the one that won't play that other note. So, anyway, set this guy down, take a piece of sandpaper, kind of roll it. I folded it a couple of times. And what we're going to do, which is kind of tricky here on camera, I can stand still long enough, she'll get it focused on me. Let's see. So we're going to go back and forth, just like this. I'm actually sanding my fingers a little bit too, so there has to be an easier way to do this, right? I'm just going to go back and forth. A lot of people are thinking, well, why don't I just send you out a block like that in the first place? We each do things completely different ways, and you may decide not to go that route. And what we're doing here, I don't know if you can see it as well that way, but it sure is a lot easier on my fingers. Um, what we're doing here is we're actually creating a little saddle. There are some flute makers that have been around for a little while that um, always make round flutes like this guy is completely round doesn't have the flat section that one of our flutes you see here's a red cedar one just to show you cedar one has a little flat section on it it's perfect for for a flat flute block to go on top of it'll play beautifully excellent way to do it we do that with a forstner bit which is a type of drill bit this guy being completely round no flat section up here has just a tiny surface area for something flat to sit on, which is this little line here, and this little line here, and a little bit flat back there. And uh, that tiny surface area does not really do a good job of sealing the flute off. One other thing is that um, other than sealing it off, it could use a little bit more airflow. And uh, if you see me switching my sandpaper around, it's to get a nice point on the end of it. And honestly, that's probably enough. Let me see. I'm going to go ahead and do one last little thing here, too. 
and it's just kind of rounding the edge off a little bit there like that. This is the edge where it actually touches the flute. And let's see if it did any good for us. I'm going to show you a close-up of this here. Oops. <laughs> I had a nickel for every time that happened. Okay. It's really entertaining. Sometimes we have wars with those things. See, it clamps out in the shop. But if you want to take a look at that really close there, I haven't played this one yet, but I'll show you with my famous pointer here. Right in this area, right like in this little place right here, you might see a little bit of a curve in there. And um, that little bit of curve helps it to sit back onto the flute better, as well as produce a little bit more airflow. So let's see if it sounds any different. It's really night and day different between what it was. I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera as well as I can hear it here. But I'm going to go ahead and sand it just a little bit more. I'd like to make this saddle a little bit wider, I think. I'm going to fold my paper one more time. Well, I'll tell you what, let's try something different. I was talking with one of our viewers earlier and telling her about an idea I had to, to do this. And I think rolling it up will make it much, much better. I can feel it already in the sandpaper how firm it is right now compared to folding it. Some of these kind of things you just got to experiment around with. In the shop, I'd use a Dremel to do this. It's how I made the last one, the one I showed you. And uh, I want to make sure, in case some of you don't have a Dremel on hand or don't feel comfortable using such a powerful little tool on something so fine that you're holding between your fingers, which may not be a good idea, mind you. I want to make sure there was a way you could do it easy. Wow, that looks great. Actually looks better than the one I did with the Dremel. Okay. That's amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and go back and put my curve back into it just a little bit here. And I put it this time just in the just in the end, but also in the little middle cove section that we built. And putting this on the flute, I'm going to take a look at it. Set it right there and clamp it down, and let's see how it sounds. That's really night and day different than, than what it was a few moments ago. And I'm sure with a little bit more effort, this guy here could produce an amazing, amazing tone. I've had lots of customers that have messaged back in after getting their flute kits. Some of them made them with their children, and some of them are actually flute makers that just wanted to, to try something different. And some of them are people that are not new to flute making. Uh, one of our friends is a, uh, a clay whistle maker, which is cool, and uh, regardless of your skill level, I think you can master this in no time, really easy, so just got a nice little curve there to it, I think that's got it though, and I'm going to lay it down right on that area, go ahead and time back on. Any of you that are wondering how to tie your flute block on, we've actually got a video on doing that, which is kind of helpful. I hope. So, wrap the leather around, wrap it around, push it back down, wrap it around. Sounds like a song. Don't stick them in your mouth. It's a bad idea. Of course, Indian people used to tan leather with saliva. I've done that for thousands of years, up until the time I was a kid, even, which is more than 40 some odd years ago. But uh, 
I used to chew leather, chew rawhide until it turned into leather. So don't be afraid to make this little area here a little deep into the flute and make the area into the block there a little bit deep too but you know like I say night and day difference I can feel how it, it doesn't want to slide as much and that's because there's more frictional surface touching the flute now um, and on top of it it's curving around the flute around the track area which is good uh, that helps to seal it off better and uh, obviously you know like I always say if you do just a little bit here and a little bit there something something good comes of it usually so um, just a, a little minor change and a major sound difference so something I think really helps everybody out and of course if you guys have any other questions feel free to send us an email or ask us on our YouTube channel which we try to get to pretty regularly and send us a message on Facebook which is our Blue Bear Arts on Facebook um, of course our website if you need to contact us there there's a neat little new uh, contact us form. Hopefully it's still up at the time that this video <laughs> is being seen. But uh, it's uh, kind of helpful. Sometimes I come online and surprise people and say, hey, how you doing? But um, if you want to contact us, you can send us an offline message there. There's always contact forms at the bottom of our website. And uh, of course that's bluebearflutes.com. If you have any other questions, like I say, always send us an email. Ask us a question. Never hesitate. We like to hear from you. It gives us good ideas for new videos as well as uh, you know, new flute making ideas for uh, for everybody. That's how these flute kits actually came to be. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Charlie Matatuyela signing out for today. You guys have a happy time making the flutes.